it all started with a thought. Someone had to think of those things. And then it was the facilitation of that thought. The thing is, now because we have so many interceptors, we're not able to facilitate our own thoughts. Instead, these interceptors come in and they look at your thoughts and they quote unquote steal your ideas. But it's because you have no idea that your idea is actually the creation of an event and a place or a, or a thing. Like you feel as though it's just a thought, no big deal. You're unsure that you can do this. You're unaware that you can do this. And then you, like you said, it seems spiritual, but it's not, it's biological. It is, our ability to create and manifest is not a spiritual mindset, but it has been taught to be a spiritual mindset in order for it to seem to be less renowned and less utilized. So we have people that they, we get upset with that we call the powers that be and they, they practice this type of energy manipulation. But the truth of the matter is they're just using the energy that people are freely repelling and just 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 disregarding. They're saying, you know what? I don't even believe in that. That's no big deal. I don't believe in God, but it's not God. You are God. You know what I mean? And you're God because you're a creator. It's not, I heard in a chat before you guys, not you guys, because it might not necessarily be you, but they were speaking of someone who used to call themselves God. And they were like, oh, that's like having a God complex, blah, 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 blah. But the truth of the matter is each and every one of us are a creator. And by definition, God's a creator. God, you are a God. You are God. Like, that's who you are. But I'll tell you that that type of thought process, if I'm a power that be, is unacceptable because I believe I'm God, but I'm going to tell you, no, we're not allowed to believe that. We're not allowed to stand on that so that I can control you. Now I've divided and I've conquered you from your power. So I've separated you from it and now I'm using it. And now you're wondering how I just thought about that and it's right there because, oh, I've been watching you for a while now. I've been draining your energy and recepting every single thing you could possibly consider for about five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand 10,000 years. Yeah, no, like right there. We're afraid and, of the. Uh, oh, right. Is there, is there somebody else there? I'm unsure. I see two up here. Okay. Well, um, it could have been just bleed back, but uh, when when you were saying receptors and some of the stuff you were discussing, the thing that really stuck out to me is like you uh, were uh, talking about about what you were talking about and receptors in the brain started clicking you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's like the word receptor just popped out in my mind and i'm like you know your brain has has these receptors that receives information and sends it and sends it right so yeah uh, and uh also you know the whole thing i i, I just wanted to hear about the physical thing because of what you were talking about but i wasn't saying anything referring to spiritual you know what i mean no so, idea what i did i literally pressed the button the next thing i knew you were gone and i was just like oh, okay. I just, yeah i had no idea i thought there was somebody else in here so, <laughs> maybe maybe there is you know how the how computer systems work um i think you should have tagged robot he said um yesterday he said that he didn't have internet or something i don't know um but um yeah no with we, we we are we're message signals we were message centers and that's the thing that like we're computers that's why they're able to design computers because we are the computer system in which these mimic our brain looks if you look at the universe in regards to like the milky way and how the galaxies are formed our fingerprints um parallel it and even within your pupils it's like that's why you your eye and you have your, um, oh gosh, I'm going to say the wrong thing. But Sirius, uh, Sirius, have you heard of Sirius Planet B or whatever, like the Sirius B? Like all of this is within your genetic makeup. But if you get too powerful, you'll realize that you're living in a simulation, being completely submissive to people that have not at all your well-being at hand. Um, like I said, I'm now finishing the Ring of Power, and they talk about how the United States liberation and how the United States isn't even able to control the United States. That London actually, England actually controls the United States, and it's crazy because you know we fought for our independence. Allegedly, we have it. Blah 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 blah. But then there's a the 13th Amendment that actually gets omitted and just disappears and that says that England has um, English settlers have the right to come into our country and not only come into our country like basically make money off of us like they have that right and it, it, it's continuously indefinitely 
nothing to have been changed. And it's all, and I don't like to say all, but it started with people. And that's why yesterday we were talking about like people come from different places. It all started with recognizing, hey, what are you doing here? What are you creating? And how are you able to do that? And people saying, I'm just talking to the universe. That sounds kind of bizarre to do, but like even with the moon, that's why the women's um, menstrual cycle go with like full moon phases. And, and there's different phases of the moon that our menstrual cycle relates to. And it's in regards to our connection to the universe. It is spiritual fact that we have no other way to define this energy. So we call it the spirit, but it really is a vibration. It's a vibrational frequency that we are emitting and we're operating on. So based on your frequency, based on my frequency, it'll either connect or it'll repel. And like a uh, proton neutron type of relationship. You're going to have your ne um, your negative, um, excuse me, an electron, and you're going to have your negatives and you're going to have your positives. Now, of course, if you have a negative and a positive, we've all done math, Negative times a positive makes a negative. Positive and positive make positive. Negative and negative make positive. So that's why really, really nasty, gross people, bad, mean people, they can all get in a group huddle and all be happy. But if you throw it, it, it because they're all negative, it's no big deal. We're all disgusting, so it's no big deal. But if you throw something positive into it, and this is from experience, especially my marriage, like my last marriage, my ex-husband's family, and I don't like to, like, when I say... It, 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 you just watch some things and you learn some things and this is how I learned but you throw that positive into it it causes a disruption to the system what do you mean we should not say this what do you mean we should not do this what do you mean like it's it, and it now there's a disruption but if I'm in a group of positive people who see things from a positive point of perspective and, 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 and it's a bunch of positive energy, it's not going to be really negative until someone negative comes in and says, oh, what y'all talking about stupid? Well, hold on. You might not agree with it. You don't have to agree with it. We're not forcing anyone to agree with our way of thinking. We know the power of our way of thinking. We recognize it. And all we're doing is giving you the opportunity to be free in your thoughts so that way you as well can understand the power in free thinking. But people think that you're attempting to impose some type of like standard or some type of belief. But how can you be against having your complete control of who you are, what you create? If you say, like, like, what happens if Monday morning, everybody that goes to work, every single person that has to get up and goes to work just says, I'm not going today. I'm not going. I'm not going. Every single one, though, in this country. What happens? Do you feel like your boss is calling every single one of you guys and saying, you're all fired? Like, no, that's not a good business move at all. Like, they're, 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 they're tweaking. Like, what's happening with my money? What's going on? And the reason being is because you work for them, but we tell you that this is for you. But you're in a world that nothing you do is able to be for you because your mind is not being excelled. You're not exalting your highest power. You're not even attempting to exercise it because it sounds so bizarre the way to achieve it. The way to achieve it is literally connecting with nature. That sounds so lame. That sounds like, you're right. That's not going to make me powerful and walk through walls because you've tried it, right? No, but you before you went to work, I told you I you can be a millionaire and move up in this building and move up in this company if you do this and you try that. And it's like, yeah, because I can see you can see what the money you can't see the money. You see what I show you. You don't. I never said that I worked my way from the bottom to the top in this business and became a millionaire. I said you can. I'm not even saying that I have a direct example of this. I'm just saying that it's possible. Most CEOs did not start at the bottom. Most CEOs started owning a business. They started with a thought and they manifested it. They facilitated it. And yeah. Now, uh, a lot of the stuff that you're discussing too, I, I noticed like it, it's really, really close to uh, the physical and reality. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that hard to jump off from to a spiritual uh, level when when you think about it like that you know what i mean it's pretty uh pretty close to just the physical realm you know because like uh like f I, I don't really mention it too much but like i sobered up from drugs and alcohol in 2003 i haven't had a touch of it you know what i mean um and, congratulations and the, that's a discipline the the thing that i uh 
have issues with when it comes to uh, a lot of things I hear is like, like, you know how you were talking about the pineal gland? Yes. There's a, a group of followers that are out there, and I've had the conversation with a robot. He, he, he falls into this category, too, where they, they think that, you know, using this drug, which is a mind-altering drug, okay, is going to, like, enhance your being and make you a better person. And uh, for me, I, I first of all, I, I had to suffer with drugs and alcohol for th the earlier part of my life, all the way up from about 13 until I was 30. You know, <laughs> so I understand what the pain and suffering is of actually going through that is. You know, first of all, and second of all, it's kind of like what we were talking about here. You know, um, you're, you're introducing introducing a poison into your body that your body just re it rejects it doesn't matter if you are an alcoholic or just a alcohol abuser what you're doing is you're you're taking this foreign drink and you're introducing it into your body which is a poison to your body naturally and over time it becomes natural it becomes acceptable you know what i mean yeah because you reconstruct your dna you reconstruct who you are so well, you're even, you, you even adapt to it even in society you know what i'm saying like you, you don't have a party if there isn't drinks you see what i mean if if there if there i mean who wants to go to a party where there's no drinking you know what i'm saying who wants to go to a bar if they can't drink you know what i mean who, if there were bars for different stuff, though, imagine, like, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure that if we could promote something, because I'm not a big drinker. Like, I, I, I'll have me a pina colada, but alcohol makes my stomach hurt. It, I, like, alcohol really makes my stomach hurt. I can't drink, and I used to drink. You know, when I went to college, I, I turned up. And like I said, I will have a pina colada. I like pina colada. <laughs> pina colada is good. But I'm not a, I, I'm not a drinker. You know what I mean? And I used to smoke yeah. weed, like the best of them. Like you couldn't pay me to not have at least a, like an eighth a day, but I don't even smoke weed anymore. Like this is just real. And this is still the thought process. So when we experience like certain type of trans mind states, I like different trans, like when in you're, I say call them transes, like you're in a trance, but you're not really in a trance, but when you're in a different form of mindset, a lot of the times we see stuff differently. Alcohol is one of the only quote unquote drugs that, that does not, and that's because it was created in order for you to oppress these feelings even more so. Like people feel like, well, I got super, super emotional, but the emotions will fluctuate. They could go angry, it can be really, really sad. But when you are high, and we especially, I know that there's usually a more mental to where you're in your mind and you're actually considering all possibilities. This is why they they um, made weed illegal. And back when they did make it and they labeled it, um, they did this whole like conspiracy thing with Gorilla Glue. And it was like this whole, like they had a guy, they, like that's how they found out what we could do. And when they found out what we could do, they used Gorilla Glue when they did it. And when they found out what we could do, they were like, no, we got to keep this under wraps. And that way we can monetize off of it. They don't tell us that part, but that was the reason for keeping it under wraps because everything makes us money. And then we tell you that the money is important, you chase the money, but you get so wrapped up in that. And when we are, high we're told that oh they're just high don't listen to them Be that becomes the stigma you're just high you know you don't know what you're talking about i'm not condoning the use of drugs absolutely not but i also know that people that use drugs especially for a mind open in effect usually have control over that usage and what they say and the knowledge that they bring back is very much accurate so when and this is going to sound crazy I was engaging with MDMA, and this was years ago. And when I did, I um, I had a direct conversation with the Most High, which happens to be my face on fire that looks like the nighttime sky and stars in it. And I know that sounds insane, but it's the truth. So I'm told, I hear in my mind, we have to talk. Like, I have to tell you something. And I go into the, my, the bathroom at my house at this time, and I'm looking in the mirror. And while I'm looking in the mirror, it's my face at first, but then God starts to speak, quote unquote, the universe. Because I always call God source universe God, because there's definitely misconceptions where it's like gold oil and diamonds. I, I know that story. So that's why I always make sure I'm saying the most high. But